Nothing says autumn and fall like a delicious homemade apple pie. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this episode. Uh, right here, I have a portion of the harvest that my partner and I picked this past weekend uh, up at our cabin in the Catskill Mountains. Uh, let's do a little flashback and I'll show you uh, some of the footage from that. And so for this recipe, which makes one pie, you're gonna need four pounds of apples. And for these, which range from being medium towards the small size since they're wild, that's about 14 to 16 apples that you're gonna peel, core, and slice up for the pie. So let's get started. A nice and easy way to prepare your apples is to start by just removing the top and the bottom of the apple, which actually gives you a nice surface to rest the apple on the cutting board. With your peeler, just go around and remove the apple skin. And then once you have a fully skinned apple, just remove one side, getting as close to the core as possible, and then the other. And then with the remaining slab, you could just once again pull away the remainder of the apple near the core and then you're just left with something you could throw away. And lastly, just go ahead and slice up the apple for the pie. And there you go. We've got all of our apples nicely prepared, ready for the pie. The next step is to gather all of our seasonings and coat the apples in them. Start with one third of a cup of dark brown sugar. Next, add a quarter cup of regular white sugar, then five tablespoons of lemon juice. Add two teaspoons of cinnamon and a half a teaspoon of salt. Next, take a quarter of a teaspoon of allspice and a quarter teaspoon of ground cardamom. You're gonna whisk it together into a paste and then add that mixture to your sliced apples and fold in to incorporate. Now that our apples are coated in this delicious blend of sugars, seasoning, and lemon juice, we're gonna let them sit anywhere from one to three hours. And what this does is it allows the acidity from the lemon and the salt to start to break down some of the coarse fibers of the apples. It's called maceration. And what we can expect after waiting one to three hours is some of the uh, liquid will also pull out from the apple, uh, which we will also use in the apple pie. So that said, let's let it sit. And in the spirit of time, we will jump forward three hours. Let's go. And welcome back. It's been three hours and my apples have been sitting here macerating, as I mentioned before, which means that some of the coarse fibers are beginning to soften. And I'm gonna get you close up and you can take a look and see how much uh, liquid has actually been pulled out of the apples. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create this really yummy sauce that we pour into the pie with the apples using some of the sauce. So come get close. So next up, on your stove, uh, bring one and a half cups of apple cider to a boil along with one vanilla bean sliced lengthwise down and just throw them in a pot and let them come to a boil. So now bring the cider and the vanilla bean to a raging boil and let it keep going at a boil until it's reduced to two thirds its size. You'll also notice it'll start to thicken up a little bit. 
Now go ahead and grab your apples and pour uh, the juice that has been extracted from the apples into the saucepan as well. Go ahead and stir two tablespoons of cornstarch into three tablespoons of cold water. Then whisk that slurry into your apple cider. And here you can see the sauce is starting to thicken real nicely. So now go ahead and take the sauce mixture that has thickened with the vanilla beans, of course, removed, scooped out, and pour it on top of the apples and sort of fold it in to incorporate. So now that you've got your incredible pie filling ready to go, the time has come to assemble the pie. Now you might be a die-hard pie maker and swear by homemade pie crust, and if that's the case, excellent, and I agree with you. But also store-bought's fine, to quote Ina Garden. <laughs> so I already have these Pillsbury pie crusts, so go ahead, make sure they are in between refrigerator cool and room temperature so that they're more easily pliable. And I'll walk you through the process of assembling the pie. Getting your pie crust out from the box. So go ahead and unwrap your pie dough and make sure that it's not too brittle. You can sort of feel when you unroll it if there's resistance and even the warmth of your hand uh, can start to sort of make it more pliable. And then once it's nice and flat, take your pie dish and then gently just drape it over and let it sort of fall into place. And you can see where it cinches up, making sure the corners are pushed all the way in. Now go ahead and take one egg, add a teaspoon of water and whisk it together for an egg wash. And then go ahead and apply the egg wash to the sides of the pie. And this will just ensure that once we add the top of the pie, that it'll secure nice. Go ahead and add your pie filling into your pie. And you know, you might have extra. And if you do, sometimes it's nice to make a little apple galette, or if you have like a smaller pie dish, you can make like a mini pie, or you might even have enough for two pies. And that's really nice. Now, if you want and make it easy for yourself, you could take your other pie crust and just go right on top. But what I'm gonna do, because I think it always looks really special, is I'm gonna make a lattice top. What you're gonna need for this is taking either a pizza cutter or even like a butter knife, and then just go ahead and make about half an inch strips in the pie crust. And if they're not straight, that's okay. The thing about this is even if it has like a rustic sort of rough look, it still looks so delicious. You're gonna take your pie and starting with the longest strip, go ahead and press that into the side. And you can start by doing this like so. Taking the other strips going horizontally, you can begin to sort of crisscross the pie like this. And it doesn't have to be too tight because you want some air to come through the top. That's the nice thing about a lattice top is it lets some of the steam uh, come out. And then once again, lifting this side up, putting this down. You could even do this ahead of time and then put it over the pie once you've done the weaving. Great, and now that your dough is basically attached and ready to go, one thing that I like to do to give it sort of like a nice periphery is I do this sort of like indentation, almost like a scalloped edge. I just do it with my fingers. You can see it just gives it sort of like a nice little finished quality. And you also can sort of take any extra pie crust that's sort of bunched up and sort of push it and squeeze it together. So it becomes sort of like a, a finished edge. It's just what it needs. There you go. And now the last step is with your remaining egg wash, brush the top of your pie. And then while it's still wet, 
take your demerara sugar and just sprinkle it on top. And this is just sugar that's like much coarser. There's a little bit of molasses in it, which gives it like a really beautiful brown color. And it just tastes really nice. It adds a really nice mouthfeel to the pie when you have a, a slice and there's little crunchy sugar bits on top. This might be one of those moments where you're like, when do I stop? <laughs> just use your own discretion, I guess. This looks good to me. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop now. I think that's enough sugar. Now with the oven preheated to 375, place the pie in the middle of your oven and we'll leave it in for one and a half to two hours or until golden on top. All right, it's been just about an hour and a half, a little bit under. Everyone's oven is different, so make sure you just go ahead and take a look and wait until the pie is sort of golden brown on top and that's when it's ready. This pie looks ready, so it's time to take it out. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, so we let the pie cool for about an hour and you wanna do that because if you start cutting into it when it's hot out of the oven, the liquid and the, the apples are gonna get real runny. <laughs> and so by letting the pie cool, it congeals a little bit and it slices really nice and evenly. Let's uh, take a bite of this pie and see how it tastes. Taste test time. Mmm, so good. The apples are done perfectly. They're not too firm, not too squishy. Oh, the sweetness with the saltiness. It's really, really perfect. Mmm, the texture of the Demerara sugar on there. Mmm, so good. Heating this up with a little bit of ice cream on top, vanilla ice cream a la mode. Perfect, divine. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this apple pie walkthrough from picking the apples to making the pie. I'm sure some of you have your own suggestions on how you would have made the apple pie. So leave a comment below. Tell me what you would have done differently or what your experiences are like. And for more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Danny. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.